Welcome to my guide to the CGP Set A Test 5 Maths paper. As usual, give yourself 10 minutes to do the test. Treat it as if it was a real test, then you can come back to the video and see if you got the marks. Number 1. 21 footballers each score the same number of goals in one season. The total number of goals scored is 483. How many goals did each footballer score? Because the footballers all had the same number of goals, we can divide 483 by 21. So we can use the bus stop method here. How many 21s go into 4? The answer is 0. How many 21s go into 48? That would be 2, remainder 6. How many 21s go into 63? That would be 3. 3 21s make 63, so our answer is 23. Number two, place one of these signs in the box to make the statement correct. Uh, in order to compare these two numbers, we need to make sure they're in the same format. And at the moment, we have decimals here and fraction here. So we need to convert one into the other. Now, the easiest one to do would be this one here. This is 66 hundredths. So we can change that, call that 66 one hundred. And we need to convert this to a hundredth, so it's easier to compare. And what we need to do then is times the bottom by 5 to make 100. Now, if we're going to do that, we also need to make sure we do the same to the top so that we get an equivalent fraction. So 13 times 5, uh, 5 times 10 is 50, 5 times 3 is 15, add them together, 65 hundredths. So which one is bigger, 66 hundredths or 65 hundredths? It's obviously going to be 66 hundredths. So we make sure we get the correct sign, this one here. The bigger number is always in this bigger part of the sign here. Number three, the sequence 1, 3, 9, 27 use the rule multiplied by the same number each time. Write down the next two terms. Uh, so looking at what we've got, we had a 1 and it turned into a 3. So we've obviously multiplied that by 3. Uh, in order to get to 9, we've also multiplied by 3. So it's, it looks like we're just multiplying by 3 each time. So in order to get the next two terms, we just need to multiply 27 by 3. So let's have a go at doing that here. 3 times 7 is 21, put the 1, carry the 2, 3 times 2 is 6, add the 2 is 81, so that's the first one. And the same again, we're going to multiply 81 by 3, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 8 is 24, so our answer is 243. Okay, number four, order the fractions below from largest to smallest. Similarly, with a question we had previously, we need to make sure that all of our fractions have the same denominator so that we can compare them properly. Now, at the moment, they're a mix. We've got six, we've got quarters, and we've got ninths. So what we need to do is find a common multiple of all three of these numbers. So a number that's in the six, the four, and the nine times table. Uh, one way you could do that, if you're not sure, is just to write out your times tables and then have a look and see which one is in all three. Um, or we could multiply them all together, because then we know that it's in the 6, the 4, and the 9. However, that would give us quite a large number. So instead, what I'm going to do is have a look at trying to create one of these numbers. So 4 times 9 is 36. Uh, and is 36 in the 6 times table? Well, yes it is. So 6 times 6 is 36. So we could change all our denominators to 36. Um, that was just a lucky guess. I went for this one and multiplied them together. If we'd have gone this way and done 6 times 4, that would have been 24. And that's not in the 9 times table, so we can't do that. So it's just about finding a number that's in all 3. Okay, let's go about turning them into 36. If I want to turn 6 into 36, I need to multiply it by 6. So the top and the bottom, 5 times 6 is 30. So it'll be 30, 36. I want to turn quarters into 36. So I need to times that by 9. 3 times 9 is 27. 4 times 9 is 36. And finally, I need to multiply this by something to turn it to 36. And the answer would be 4. So multiply the top by 4. 7 times 4 is 28. And 9 times 4 is 36. And now we can compare them because we've got the same denominator. So our largest one would be 30, 36. However, we need to order these fractions. So we need to remember, that's why I've done them in order, which one is which. So 5 sixths was 30, 36. So that is the largest one, 5 sixths. Uh, the next one is 28, 36. So that's 7 ninths. 
and finally the smallest is 2736 which is three quarters. Number five, Ozzy is reading a history book that uses Roman numerals. The book says that a British Prime Minister was born in the year MCMXXV, right the year that the Prime Minister was born in figures. So this is obviously a test of your Roman numerals. What you should know uh, is that M stands for a thousand, C stands for a hundred, uh, we've already mentioned M stands for a thousand, X's stand for 10 and V's stand for 5. So using your knowledge of Roman numerals, we should be able to piece together what this number is. So the, we have the first bit, that's 1,000. So that would be our first digit. Now this bit here is important, CM. That is 100 before 1,000. So 100 before 1,000 is 900. So we've got our 19 there. Uh, and to finish off our date, we have two X's in a row, which means 20 x x 10 10 which makes 20 and finally v which is 5 so we have our 1925 so 1925 would be the year number six every weekend ralph travels 44 kilometers to visit his family approximately how far is this in miles so what we need to do is convert the kilometers into miles so we know that eight kilometers is five miles so let's see how many eights we can fit into this first we know that five eights are 40 so we've got five lots of this and we've still got four kilometers left so five times five is 25 so 25 miles equals 40 kilometers now we want 44, so we need an additional four kilometers. So what we could do is half this, half of five miles is gonna be four kilometers. So half of five is 2.5, that equals four kilometers. And now we can add them together. 40 kilometers add four obviously makes 44 kilometers. So that would be 25 miles add 2.5 miles, which is 27.5 miles. Number seven, reflect shape K in the X axis, label the reflected shape L. Uh, so this, in this case, the X axis is always this horizontal one here, and the Y axis is the vertical one. So if we're going to reflect it in this axis, we're going to reflect this whole shape, but imagining this was the mirror line. Okay, so I'll do my best, because obviously I'm on the computer. You would use a ruler make, to make sure that all the lines are straight. So starting at this point here, one, two, three, it's three points away. What I tend to do is do each corner individually and then join it up. So looking at this point first, it's three away from the x-axis. So we'll go an additional three. One, two, three. That's going to be the first point. Uh, this one's a bit further away and one in. So that's there. And then another one up. That one there. And then do my best to join them up. and that one is L. So as you can see, it's reflected there in this line here. Imagine you put a mirror there. Shape L is reflected in the Y axis to give shape M. What are the coordinates of point X on shape M? Well, point X on shape L was this point here. Okay, I'm just gonna make a note of that. So if we're gonna reflect this whole shape in the Y axis now, then we need to be finding the same point X, but over here once we've reflected it. So same technique as before, look at the corners, that's two away, that goes there, that one's additional one away and up, and there, and join up best I can, and that is shape M, so point X would be this point right here, now it says give the coordinates, so we always start with the X, as you can see, that's minus 3. So the first one is minus 3. And the height, the y, goes next. That's on point 4. So our coordinates are minus 3, 4. Last question then, number 8. Two cafes reduce the size of their drinks. The drinks at Cafe A decrease from 400 milliliters to 320 milliliters. The drinks at Cafe B decrease from 300 to 225. Which cafe reduces the size of its drinks by the bigger percentage? Okay, it's very important that you show you're working out for this one. As it says here, you could get a mark for it. So just 
by recording you working out you know just by doing the right thing you could still get a mark so it's worth doing what we need to do then to find the percentage is we need to find the difference first so how much has it gone down by in terms of milliliters 400 minus 320 would be 80 milliliters so that's dropped by 80 milliliters this one's dropped by 75 milliliters okay now we've got the difference between the original size and the new size uh, we can start to work out the percentage loss so what we need to do is do the difference divided by the original drink size so the difference of cafe a was 80 milliliters divided by 400 milliliters which was its original size this should give us a percentage so what we need to do is to convert this fraction into a percentage uh, what we need to do then is get it so it's uh, an easy number that we can work with let's look at cancelling it down first let's divide by 8 if we divide the top and the bottom by 8 we get 10 fiftieths I've divided both numbers by 8 now we can see quite easily now if we divide this by 10 we're going to end up with 1 fifth and you should know that 1 fifth is the same as 0 0.2 which is also the same as 20%. So that's dropped by 20%. Doing the same with the next number then, we have 75 over 300. Let's look at cancelling it down. Let's divide by 5. How many 5s are in 75? The answer is 15. How many 5s are in 300? Well, how many 5s are in 30? It's 6. Add 0 on the end, it would be 60ths. Let's cancel it down again. Let's divide by 5. We get 3 on the top. Divide 60 by 5. We get 12. Now we can divide that by 3. We're cancelling it right down, simplifying it. We get 1 at the top and 4 on the bottom. So it's 1 quarter, which you should know is the same as 0 0.25, which is the same as 25%. So which ones had the biggest drop? Well, Cafe A has dropped by 20% and Cafe B has dropped by 25%. So the one that's dropped the most with the biggest percentage is Cafe B. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as that really helps me out. And I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Thanks.